Hello and welcome to a short webinar on Microsoft and Oracle Partnership. I have with me Caroline Ewan Ward, who is our Microsoft Licensing Consultant. Hello. And we'll take you through a short presentation explaining the subject matter of what has been happening with the Microsoft and Oracle Alliance. We'll cover the Oracle licensing perspective, uh, we'll cover the Microsoft Azure licensing and summary, and we'll talk about what it means to the businesses of Microsoft and Oracle and what it means hopefully to your business as well. So what's this partnership all about? Well if you haven't heard Microsoft and Oracle have got together to deliver a cloud platform and it's essentially going to be Oracle on a Windows Azure platform which will allow you to run Oracle on Hyper-V or you can have the choice of running Oracle on Oracle Linux. What are the options there? Well, I don't think we potentially recommend clients to look at putting production servers into the cloud unless it was a, a particularly non-business critical application. But we would recommend putting in basic infrastructure for big data, test and development systems, possibly UAT, maybe non-critical web services, BI, white data warehousing. Possibly more popular amongst some of our customers is going to the storage and backup. And what does this mean to Oracle and Microsoft? How does it benefit them? Well, it increases the Oracle Cloud Platform. It's not been noted for uh, having a, a wide variety of options for clients, so this increases the options. And for Microsoft, it, uh, it provides more options on Azure. Azure has been predominantly used by developers, uh, highly used in uh, India, but it's going to give a wider usage globally, I think, to uh, Oracle developers within um, some of our global customers. But how does it in particular benefit Microsoft and Oracle users, that's yourselves? Well, obviously it's another cloud option. We have AWS, we have third-party systems. Uh, but the the key here is that, and I'm going to talk about this in a minute, is the, is the options it gives you around certification for these particular platforms. It's going to be of particular interest to people who are looking to migrate from Red Hat to Oracle Linux to provide a production uh, platform. Um, there's some cost savings there. There are going to be additional benefits for existing Azure users where they can lever more from their EA uh, agreements and Caroline will talk about that shortly. And I think overall it's going to be good for both corporates and SMEs, particularly corporates where they're outsourcing and need to provide um, or provision uh, development systems. I think personally there's a big benefit if you've been following what's been happening on uh, Oracle 10G and previous versions. We're now out of extended support on 10G and customers should be really looking at what uh, is available for provisioning on 11G and 12C. So what does it mean for my business? Well, just for the non-technical people, currently we have you know, private, what we call private cloud or on-premise. Uh, we've got our production BI data. Uh, there's virtualization there. Usually it's going to be VMware. Um, and there's an opportunity within that environment for consolidation of licenses. But really what we're looking at within the within the private on-premise cloud is, a, is, a, is an initial fixed cost for the investment in the infrastructure. And the public cloud which um, has been on offer has been really aimed for testing and development for many of our clients. The Amazon AWS cloud that I mentioned earlier, uh, we have some Oracle cloud which is aimed at the ISV community and now we have the Azure and we have the ability within that environment not to have a fixed cost but pay as you go. Unfortunately, not pay as you go for Oracle clients in terms of Oracle licensing, but it is for the infrastructure piece. So what's key for this as far as we see around the Azure platform and the hybrid situation where we can mix both the public and private cloud? Well, from a licenses perspective around Oracle, we see this as a particularly good opportunity to look at your business, particularly legacy products and uh, supporting that business because there's a huge cost in Oracle testing and development systems and quite often there's a compliance risk around this because of the need to contain the licensing within these particular environments. So spinning up your testing and development and non-production systems into the Azure is uh, a great way of uh, controlling those particular costs and maintaining license compliance. 
So what's on offer from these two organisations? Well, in terms of Oracle on SQL Server uh, and Hyper-V, we're going to have a fully certified platform by Oracle. Uh, we're going to have license mobility to this platform so you can take on uh, on-premise licenses of Oracle and move them into the cloud environment. You have to uh, follow the rules to that which is available in an Oracle document which we can provision for you. Microsoft are going to create popular instances or templates including the web logic for this particular stack and uh, Microsoft are going to uh, offer a fully licensed and supported Java platform within the Azure cloud. Uh, from uh, Oracle, well we're going to have Oracle on Linux, um, we're going to, it's going to be fully supported and uh, as you'd expect and certified by Oracle. Uh, this is pretty unique in both of these cases because Oracle has always supported virtualized environments but not necessarily certified anything other than uh, Oracle virtualization. Um, we're going to have license mobility to the platform in the same way, uh, just move your licenses across and again Oracle will create uh, pre-configured templates and instances so that you can spin up these environments fairly quickly. In terms of the pricing, uh, Oracle licensing, well First of all, recommend you look at oracle.com. There's a licensing document which explains the, the rules around cloud. It's no different from AWS in terms of the rules. They're going to be the same based on virtual cores. We're going to have uh, four virtual cores for one socket. And that means that if you're running SC1, standard edition one, uh, you can only... Um, you can either run eight virtual cores, which is two sockets, and for standard edition, it's going to be uh, 16 virtual cores that you can spin up within the cloud. Uh, once you pass that, you, you by default have to go to enterprise edition. Uh, you, it's the same rules as on-premise. Once you've gone past four sockets uh, on a physical machine or a cluster, we have to go to the enterprise. And of course, all the other product families will be based on the same calculation, uh, working from the core factor that's in that cloud and then the calculation for other named users or product processes will be based on that. So in terms of pricing, well, we, we have Oracle license mobility. Um, so effectively your licenses are free, providing that you, you remain compliant on both sides of, uh, in, in moving them across. Uh, for the smaller term projects, you can look at uh, term licensing. We've got evaluation licenses, so the rules of the download for evaluation licenses for 30 days, but uh, that's the only reason why you can't spin that up in the cloud as well. But if you want any further details on licensing and pricing, then um, you know, contact your software account manager and they'll put you in touch with the relevant people. Now, there's a, a lot to learn around the Azure platform from a Microsoft perspective. I'm going to hand over to Caroline, who's going to talk you through that. Thank you very much, Rob. So this is a rather busy slide, but Azure can be many things. So effectively, what is Azure? This is Microsoft's data centers. They're servers spinning up you an automated, managed infrastructure. And we're used to putting our infrastructure into a hosted environment where someone else is managing to ensure that the lights are on for us. This is taken that a step further, where Microsoft are using their data centers to manage your operating systems, to manage your virtual machines, which may be run on hypervisor or VMware, to manage your middleware and your applications. And you can put all of these into the cloud. And as you can see from this slide, it could be used for multiple different um, uses. A number of our customers use this for web services, um, to host their websites where they need it up 24 seven. To do this on premise, they would need infrastructure, they would need services, and they would need the scalability of their network to reach across the globe. People use this for data management, where they've got an excess of data or they're looking to archive their old data that they no, need, no longer want to hold on their expensive storage on premise. People are looking to spin up uh, computers in Azure for their developers so that they can be used and turned off as and when required without impacting the current infrastructure that you may have and still need to run on premise. Within these different environments, you can use multiple languages and with this multiple data databases, including now Oracle. So Azure can be used for any multiple of purposes and with that, there are a number of different ways to buy it. So 
You can purchase Azure on the Microsoft Online Services Portal. You can pay it on your credit card and use an amount of storage, a number of IOs, a number of processing power, and pay as you go. Alternatively, if you don't know how many IOs you want, or you're not totally sure how many processes you want, and you don't want to limit one of those factors, then you can take a monetary commit value. By doing so, you use your Azure power until that monetary commit has been spent. You can still do this on the online services portal if you're looking at the minimum of $500 a month. If you know that you're going to be using a larger scale of that, you can get additional discount with the Microsoft Azure product set by taking it on your existing enterprise agreement or a standalone Microsoft Azure enterprise agreement. This is done by doing a minimum of a monetary commit of $25,000 per year and that can be consumed in any way that is required. It can be consumed by web services, by data, by the number of IOs or processing power that's required. And as you get close to using up that value, you then top up your EA and that will then mean that you've got the additional discount still in place and you can continue using your Azure. If you have any specifics um, around Azure that you would like to review the costs and see whether it's worth going for a monetary commit or looking at more as a pay-as-you-go model, Software One have some calculators that we can use that can show you the most cost-effective way for your usage. Please do get in touch with your Software One account manager to find out more details. Thanks, Caroline. It's great. So just a brief summary of the benefits of um, what's on offer. Uh, available now uh, is a key thing. You can go out today and uh, start to replatform uh, your Oracle licenses onto Azure. Um, take advantage of your pricing options on your EA if that's required. Also, think about the uh, control of license migration. Uh, you know, it's possible to reuse licenses within Oracle. There's no restrictions on moving from one machine to the other, but obviously you need to do uh, consider uh, compliance but more importantly I'd say also, uh, also think about the uh, road mapping from legacy to the new world. Um, there's an option I mentioned earlier again talk to your account manager we, we have some support reduction costs around Oracle Linux compared to Red Hat Linux and that's going to be important only if you're thinking of uh, putting this into uh, Azure Cloud because that's where you're going to get your certified platform. If you've got a cloud strategy you're looking at with your business, Software One Globally, we have a cloud readiness assessment team. And um, uh, although we probably haven't spelt it correctly on this slide, I'm sure they can probably spell it correctly on their documents. And uh, finally, uh, unfortunately, we haven't got uh, pay-as-you-go Oracle. Uh, it's going to be announced uh, at a later date, uh, according to Oracle, but I wouldn't hold your breath. It's been one of the desires of many of Oracle customers for, for many a year that they could pay as you go on, the, on an Oracle basis in the equivalent of a, a Microsoft SPLA, but it hasn't arrived yet. And this finally, free Azure trial of all available uh, at this particular URL. Go and have a look for yourselves. Uh, give it a road test. You got anything to say on that, Caroline? And also, if you are a Visual Studio with MSDN user, you also have free access to a volume of Azure data on, on via that as well. So you can activate it via your MSDN as well. Uh, and all free? All free. Oh, Thank you. fantastic. Oh, that's two lots of things free. And finally, very finally, a uh, number of events going on globally around Microsoft and Oracle, uh, webinars, uh, have a look out for them through your normal news bulletins you'll get from Software One. So thanks for your attention, folks. Uh, any questions, please drop myself, Caroline, a line. Um, I'll put the email address on the bottom there uh, or even give us a call. And uh, we look forward to speaking to you again at some point and have a great day. So it's goodbye for myself and... Thank you very much. Goodbye.